What's up guys, I'm back for part four of the series, Why is it so hard to learn to write or draw with your arm? Um, definitely check out the previous videos. If you have not, there's a link to the playlist in the description that has all the videos in this series. Um, check those out because um, they, really, they really build on each other. So, uh, But in this video, we are talking about uh, actually developing the arm muscles um, so you can effectively write or draw using your arm. Uh, so really it's about getting your your pencil out and I recommend a pencil which I talked about in the last video uh, when you start graph paper is nice too because you have lines on here just ready to go and you can use those lines to really um, see how well you're controlling the instrument the pencil um, but the, the first step that I really recommend here is just experimentation uh, it's a matter of you know just getting the pencil out and seeing what it feels like experimenting with both whole arm movement and muscular movement which I talked about in the last video um, seeing what it feels like seeing where you you feel like you do have control or you don't have control and just messing around on the page okay uh, so it's really just a matter of that and depending on you know what you're you know whether you want to use arm movement for drawing or for writing calligraphy it's really going to guide your experimentation. You know, if you're if you're doing calligraphy, then you know making some letter forms and some flourishes and things like that with whole arm movement is something you'll definitely want to try. Uh, if you're doing drawing, then you might have you're obviously going to have a little more abstract uh, experimentation, um, but there might be some things that you commonly like to draw that you want to give it a go, or some common strokes that you make that you want to try, um, and you know just play around with it is really what I recommend. So I'm just using whole arm movement right here and it's making a stroke like this. Messing around, maybe do some ellipses. I'm just kind of feeling like, all right, what direction do these ellipses want to be made in? Which, you know, what's the easiest way to go? And what size do I feel most comfortable at? You can see I'm going in both directions. This is a counterclockwise or a clockwise. Um, do all kinds of things. Kind of messing around and i recommend you do this and just see what it feels like see where you're at and uh, this will kind of get you start to feel like all right how difficult is this um, how much do i need to work on this and it starts you thinking about you know the type of art that you create you know what type of strokes you need to you need to put in there um, and start playing with and you know that's really going to guide the next step which is then really focusing on you know once you've experimented and played around and just tried some things you know all right where where do i really need to work on what do i need to develop and uh that's when you can really say all right you know these long strokes like this is something that i really want to be able to do i want to make them relatively straight and i want to make them equal width and i want to be able to stack them like this you know that's something you might want to drill with whole arm movement across the page, you know, and you can use the lines for guidance right now. Maybe you want to make them in both directions. Okay. Uh, you know, that's something that might be right for you. Uh, there are some things you can do that are just kind of general ways to develop the muscles of the arm. They'll kind of hit everything. And the two tried and true ways of are really they come from the penmanship manuals of the early 1900s which i've been talking about throughout this series the, they were the masters of arm movement and uh the first is just the what's called the oval drill which is just like running ovals like this so you kind of have your top and your bottom line and you just make ovals basically you try to make the strokes as close as you can to each other and you try to make even ovals across the page 
Now this is really develops the muscles of the arm because it's you're moving the pencil um, in all directions, so 360 degrees. And at the same time as you're making this elliptical form, you're moving across the page. So it's kind of developing your ability to not only make these forms in this position, but also make it as your arm moves further and further away from your body. And as you do make those two movements at the same time. So you're really practicing, you know, another part of arm movement is being able to move these different hinges at the same time in a subtle way, in a controlled way. Um, so this is one of the ways that they really, you know, when you started to learn penmanship in 1903, you know, this was a drill that you did, you spent a lot of time on just to develop the rain, the muscles in your arm. And uh, another great thing to do, you know, once it starts to feel a little comfortable at this size, which is gonna be really hard at first, especially with whole arm movement, and we'll talk about muscular in a second. Once it just feels comfortable at this size, drop the size down. You know, now I'm doing three squares high, and this is gonna develop those muscles even more because now it's a tighter space, it requires more control, more fine tuning from all these muscles and different hinges in the arm and shoulder. And that's gonna be another way. And you can even drop it down further. Now this isn't a size that you would ever want to use whole arm movement for, but it's great to practice here. And when you drop down to a size like this with whole arm movement, you really start to feel your muscles being worked. <laughs> and it really starts to develop the control of those muscles. And I think this is a great place to get to. It's gonna feel really uncomfortable. Like, don't let yourself get comfortable and just keep doing these really big ones. You know, and if you need to start out doing them even bigger, go ahead. You know, that's a great place to start too. Don't, don't let what I'm doing here dictate what you do. Uh, but start big and then as you work over the days and weeks and months developing your arm movement, uh, get down to these small sizes and work some sizes down here too. Again, not a size you would use arm movement at, but it's a great size to develop your arm muscles at, okay? Uh, now the other thing they would do a lot is similar drill to this, but instead of ovals or ellipses, they would just do uh, push pulls, up downs, they call them. So very similar. This kind of really hits more of the uh, shoulder movement or more vertical movement, I guess you could say, because you don't have this lateral movement going on like you do in an ellipse. For some reason, the ellipse is a little easier to control in certain ways, and this movement's a little difficult. So this, this hits some muscles that are really gonna, I think, help stabilize your arm movement as well. And again, same thing, go down to smaller sizes until you get to really small sizes, which nothing you would use arm movement for, um, but that's where you really develop the controls when you can do them at this size. Okay. Uh, and always remember, they always check yourself, make sure you're using arm movement. It's easy to, all of a sudden your arm's on the table and all of a sudden your wrist is on the table and you're going like this and you're not using arm movement anymore. That's not going to help you develop your arm movement. Um, now, in addition to the whole arm movement, you want to spend some time with muscular movement as well. So that's when you're resting this forearm muscle on the edge of the table. Now you can't write as big, you know, I'm limited to this area right here in my writing, but I can do these same drills. So I can do, I can do these horizontal strokes. I can do these strokes like this. And this is a great place to start with muscular movement. This is the natural way your arm wants to move with muscular movement. Uh, with the way that it's planted on the table and the way the elbow hinges, this is the, you'll be able to control these relatively easy. And anybody that's ever made, you know, if you've shaded, if you're draw, if you're an illustrator or something, you've shaded an area like this, and you want to do it in one stroke, you're probably already doing this to some degree. So this is a great place to start, and you can really just start to develop your control. And you can go smaller and smaller until you're doing these at a really small size. Okay. Uh, and then just like with the whole, with these oval drills that you did with whole arm movement, you can do these with muscular movement as well. Not as big and they should be easier to control. But again, you can start big at this size and go down and down. Something I didn't mention is that you can do these in both directions too. And for some reason that just kind of hits a different 
feeling in the arm when you do it counterclockwise versus or clockwise versus counterclockwise. Uh, and then again, the push pulls as well. Great way to train this. All right, so those are just a few things you can do. And, you know, like I said, it's all about experimentation. Depending on what you want to do with arm movement is really going to guide the way that you experiment and then drill and then eventually draw and I, or write. And I think that's also crucial here to eventually you just need to actually try to create the art that you have created in the past with finger and wrist and hand movement with arm movement, okay? Uh, and it's not, and you just you have to realize that the goal here is not to create, not to match what you've done in the past. It's to learn, to, it's developing the arm. And, you know, if you want to draw or write with your arm, at the end of the day, the best way to do it is just to draw to write with your arm. That's going to develop the movements that you need to make um, more than anything. And, uh, so there's nothing that really, there's no really way to replace that. And I think it's easy to get frustrated because you take a step back when you start this arm movement stuff and then you want to go right or draw with your arm. It's, there's going to be things that don't look as good, but at the same time, there's things, there's going to be things that look better. So, you know, let's say you're writing with arm movement and you want to make a capital A, I'm just going to do this with whole arm movement. Okay. And as opposed to with finger movement, Okay, so there's already a few things that you notice with the whole arm movement, I can make a much bigger A. So that's something I couldn't do before with finger movement. I could probably make this one with finger movement, but it'd be hard. I should have done that actually. Okay. But I can make a whole arm A like that, that I can't make with finger movement. Now, if we compare these two, you might say, oh, actually the form of this one is actually a, a lot better than that one. This one's I won't get into the whole form things. That's not what we're doing here, but let's just say the form of this one is better and starting out the form will be better when you use your fingers. But if you really zoom in on this, we can see that this, this is a much kinkier line. Okay. This is kind of straggling all over the place. You know, it's not bad, but it's much kinkier. This is, this line is nice and smooth and has really great line quality, graceful curves here. And that's just something you can't do with finger writing so uh, or drawing as well and so you know your drawings might look more accurate or representational when you're using your fingers to draw um, but there's going to be other things like let's say you're using your fingers to draw and you have to do a long line you know you're doing one of these things with the line okay and it's this isn't a bad line but it has these kinks in it here, here, and here that you can see. Now, when you learn arm movement and you develop the confidence to use it, you can do that all in one line. Okay. And now you're not going to have, you know, this line might not stop or start and stop exactly where you want it to, like it will when you're using your fingers. Um, it's going to have this graceful single stroke smoothness to it that you won't have with your fingers. So, um, you're giving up something and you're getting things in return when you when you start using your arm to move your pencil and your pen Okay, and I think it's really great to be cognizant of that as you're learning because it really keeps your eye on the prize Like why am I doing this? Well, I'm gonna you know, I'm giving up some control right now But I'm getting line quality grace and smoothness in my writing or drawing immediately in return and I'm gonna keep working on my arm movement over time and I'm gonna develop the control so that now not only am I getting the line quality and the grace of the arm movement, I also have some control that can almost match my finger movement. And it really does get to the point where, you know, I almost do everything with arm movement to some degree now, unless it's just really like a small little thing. Say I wanted to add a texture to this line. I might use finger movement to do this. But when I'm making these lines, I'm using arm movement or even a small size like this. I'm using arm movement. Okay. 
And then there's, I mean, there's so many other benefits, you know, you can really get into pressurized drawing and writing with arm movement that it's not quite as easy with finger movement, especially at bigger sizes. Um, you know, I can write really light, lightly, and then I can make a, add the pressure to that. And it's very, it's a very smooth transition when you're using your arm and it's very easy and graceful and effortless. So, um, that's what's going on here. Let me end this video now. I've gone long enough. Um, that was part four. I'm not sure what else we have in store in this series. Leave a comment if you have any questions and want to see something else. Um, love to continue working on this topic as I, as I myself learn more about arm movement. I'm still trying to figure out a lot myself. So uh, hopefully have some more videos. But for now, the playlist with all the videos in it will be in the description of this video. So you can check it out there, see if there's anything else you haven't seen yet. Uh, but yeah, leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And uh, check me out on Instagram at Perfect Biscuits. Check out my website, perfectbiscuits.com. You can contact me directly on there and privately. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching.